This is KGW News at Noon. A serial sex offender dubbed the TriMet Barber back in court today. His nickname does not do him justice or the seriousness of his crimes. Jared Walter has been arrested and convicted multiple times on sexual abuse charges. Good afternoon to you. Thanks for being here. I'm Chris Willis. Christine Pitawanich begins our coverage. She was inside the courtroom today. And Christine, the judge denied the prosecution's request to increase bail on this guy. And Chris, the decision to not increase bail may seem shocking to some, especially because Jared Walter has been arrested nearly 20 times. We spoke with one of his victims, and I can tell you what she has to say is both disturbing and a warning graphic. Jared Walter. Back in court, the environment all too familiar for Jared Walter. He's been arrested nearly 20 times and has been convicted of masturbating and cutting women's hair on public transportation. He had ejaculated into my hair. Crystal Williams is beyond angry that Walters is back in court, still not locked up for good after so many arrests. This time around, Walters accused of putting his hand in a woman's pocket and touching her thigh on a TriMet Max train Monday. Today, prosecutors asked the judge to increase his bail from $9,000 to $100,000. I think we owe it to the pub, I owe it to the public to at least make the argument to the court that it's not safe on TriMet for the riders that are being uh, touched inappropriately that have been in the past and that are again still today. So I think the best place for him is right here in Multnomah County Detention Center until we get this case resolved. But Walter's attorney cited two Supreme Court cases as precedent that say the purpose of bail is to ensure appearance in court. She said Walter's history doesn't show a flight risk. There's no evidence of failures to appear. Based off the arguments, Judge Judith Matarazzo made her decision. There's no reason for me to increase bail at this point. So that bail amount, of course, staying at $9,000, which means that it would take $900 for Walter to get bailed out. Now, prosecutors did bring up a time when Walter apparently ran from police more than 10 years ago in Texas. But his attorney says that running from police is not the same as not showing up in court. He's due back in court April 19th. Back to you. Christine Pitawanich live. Thank you. Transit police, meantime, issued a 90-day ban on Walter from riding TriMet. We reached out to TriMet this morning. They told us they're still considering whether they can issue a longer ban of up to a lifetime for Walter. He, I think, saved lives and took action um, that even himself after being harmed. A 53-year-old Metro bus driver is being called a hero for what he did following a deadly shooting in North Seattle yesterday. Police are calling it a senseless and random act. It all began when a 33-year-old man tried to carjack a vehicle. Police say he shot a 56-year-old woman in her car before walking into the street and shooting at a bus. The bus driver was hit but managed to turn the bus around and drive away. After that, the gunman reportedly approached a second vehicle and killed a 50-year-old man who was behind the wheel. He then led police on a chase in that man's car, crashed into another vehicle, killing a 70-year-old man. After a brief standoff, police took him into custody. We're hearing from one of the passengers on the bus who escaped the violence. And I could see the uh, cartridge shells coming out of the weapon. And you have a sort of a funny reaction to it. You think it's firecrackers at first, or it's a starter's pistol. And then I thought, oh my God, that's a real gun. I'm getting out of here. That bus driver spoke with Good Morning America today. He and the other victim are recovering, but they are expected to be okay. Investigators say they still don't know what motivated that crime spree. Today, family and friends will pay tribute to a Washington deputy killed in the line of duty. Ryan Thompson was a sheriff's deputy for Kittitas County. He died in a shootout with a road rage suspect. That suspect later died at the hospital. A public memorial will be held at Central Washington University this afternoon. It'll be at the Nicholson Pavilion, 2 o'clock. Thompson was a 14-year law enforcement veteran. He leaves behind a wife and three kids. Vancouver police need your help finding this teenager, Pandora Hertel. The 15-year-old has autism. Police worry that she's in danger. She walked away from school yesterday and did not come home. She's described as five foot three inches tall, brown hair, brown eyes, and was wearing a black hoodie with green sweatpants. If you see her, you're encouraged to call Vancouver police.
Also in Vancouver, the fire marshal is investigating what started this fire at a baseball field behind Fort Vancouver High. Alcoa Little League uses this field. Fire officials were able to put out the blaze yesterday, but not before it damaged the announcer's booth and a storage facility. A league spokesperson says they lost their pitching machine, snack shack supplies, sound system, umpire gear, and a lot more. The league is collecting donations through a GoFundMe page. We'll have more on this story coming up on KGW News at 4. Take you outside now, a live look from our Wells Fargo SkyCam. Beautiful start to the day. Is it going to change though? Meteorologist Rod Hill tracking the threat of stormy weather later today, Rod. Yeah, good, uh, good, I almost said good morning. Good afternoon, <laughs> Chris. Uh, we still have that chance of showers starting to explode a bit on us at some point, let's say after four o'clock this afternoon. And you just showed right now, it's quite lovely outside. Generally, it's partly cloudy across all of Oregon up into Washington, but there are developing showers to our south, just south of Eugene right now. The cloud deck starts to thicken up. Here is the uh, mostly sunny sky over the Reserve Vineyards and Golf Club out on low, where it was 32 degrees earlier this morning, right now up to 50. So that's really a pretty good warm up if you consider how cool we were. Temperatures generally at noon are right around 50. There are some cooler spots still. There's Kaiser at 48 degrees. So, real quick, our latest Futurecast model. This is 4.30 this afternoon, showing showers starting to fire up coming up from our south, showing some heavier action along the coast range. Uh, here's what could be a thunderstorm or a hailstorm in the Salem right at 6 o'clock. And then as the showers move north right now, the latest model kind of fizzles everything out. But clearly we'll be on watch for some blackening skies. There'll be scattered stuff, Chris. Probably most of us don't see anything, but some of us certainly could, sir. Take the rain jacket just in case. All right, Rod, thank you. Now to a developing story. Someone stole a portrait of a former Oregon governor and Portland mayor from City Hall. Take a look at this. That's where the picture of Neil Goldschmidt used to be. See it right in the center of your screen. According to our news partner, the Oregonian video posted on Facebook yesterday shows a man grabbing the photo before leaving City Hall. Police are now investigating. Goldschmidt was mayor from 1973 to 1979 before serving as the U.S. Transportation Secretary and then governor of Oregon. In 2004, he confessed to having sex with a teenager during his first term as mayor but he could not be prosecuted for rape because the statute of limitations had expired. Homeless crisis now. Neighbors dealing with Portland's homeless crisis were tired of seeing scenes like this. Fires have broken out at this camp on 14th and Montgomery in southwest Portland at least twice. Tents, piles of trash and human waste have been a common sight at that intersection for years. But then neighbors had an idea. They cleared out the trash and planted rose bushes there instead. But as KGW's Lindsay Nadrich reports, they almost had to rip all those rose bushes out. Not only is it an eyesore, but there's kind of a safety component that goes with it too, walking you know, past the encampment at, at night. It's a little shady. Neighbors tell me they don't want to demonize the homeless, but they do want to feel safe. And after repeated issues, they decided it was time to reclaim their street. About five weeks ago, a group of neighbors raised $700 to clean up garbage, human waste and needles left behind by one of the camps and planted about 80 rose bushes in its place. I think it's great. I think it's a, 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 a step in the right direction and moving forward and kind of getting trash and everything else just kind of cleaned up and more presentable. ODOT recently learned the roses were planted on their property without a permit and initially told neighbors they had to be removed by April 1st. We so appreciate that they want to do this because, you know, we can't be everywhere all the time. And people wanting to take ownership for their own area is terrific. But we do have a process for, for doing these kinds of things, and we appreciate people working with us on doing it right. ODOT is now working with neighbors to get a permit and says the roses can stay, but the handmade sign and the ribbons tied around each one need to go. We are asking that those be removed because they could be safety hazards, uh, a distraction to drivers, and actually contribute to trash in the area if they don't stay tied to the roses. Neighbors disagree telling me the sign and ribbons are just as important and say it's no more of a distraction than the piles of trash that were once there. That issue has yet to be resolved. But in the meantime, folks tell me the new plants seem to be making a difference. There's only one tent that's come back. The rest are now farther down the road. Very, very big difference. Definitely not a lot of uh, tents or uh, little encampments there. So it seems to be working. 
That was Lindsay Nadrich reporting. The group that planted the roses tells us they plan to keep working with ODOT on this, but also said, quote, we are handling our community our way now. Washington one step closer to raising the legal age for buying tobacco and vaping products. Lawmakers have approved a proposal that would raise the minimum age from 18 to 21. Governor Jay Inslee is expected to sign that bill, which would take effect January 1st. The measure includes e-cigarettes and vape devices, whether or not they contain nicotine. Washington will be the ninth state, including Oregon, to raise the tobacco and vapor sales to age 21. The FBI and the J Department of Justice will review the decision by Chicago prosecutors to drop all those charges against actor Jesse Smollett. In a tweet this morning, President Trump called the case a, quote, embarrassment to our nation. Smollett's lawyer responded to the new investigation during an interview today on the Today Show. I mean, we have nothing to be concerned about because there was nothing on our end to uh, request this, to do anything improper, and to my knowledge, nothing improper was done. Smollett had been indicted on 16 felony counts for allegedly fabricating a hate crime against himself in January. Police say he did it because he was unhappy with his salary on the Fox show Empire. Smollett, meantime, maintains his innocence. I think it's good that he was able to finish the work and establish both. That's former FBI Director James Comey now speaking out for the first time since the Russia investigation concluded. Comey says it's good for the country that Robert Mueller did not find evidence of collusion between President Trump and Russia. But he also says Attorney General William Barr's summary left questions that only the full report can answer. But the obstruction piece confuses me. I think both Director Mueller and Attorney General Barr are entitled to the benefit of the doubt. They are people with sterling reputations. But a lot of what is said in that letter doesn't make sense to me. Late this morning, a Justice Department official revealed that Mueller's report is more than 300 pages long. Barr released a summary that was four pages. He did that on Sunday. It's not clear when or if Congress will get the full report. Democrats are demanding they get it by Tuesday, but the Attorney General says a review to take out classified information could take weeks.